Manager Committee Number 91 of the Monetary Policy Committee meeting Monday 23rd and Tuesday 24th September 2013. The Monetary Policy Committee met on September 23rd and 24th 2013 with all the 12 members in attendance. The committee reviewed the economic conditions and challenges that confronted the domestic economy after September, particularly since the last NPC meeting in July 2013. It reassessed the short to medium term risks to inflation, domestic output, external balance, and financial system stability. International economic developments. The global economy continued the slow path to recovery with financial systems responding swiftly to new unexpected risks. The risks include the possibility of the U.S. Federal Reserve tapering off its accommodative monetary policy stance and higher long-term interest rates as the economy enters recovery mode. This move, which has been temporarily postponed, portends uncertainties in external conditions for emerging markets and developing economies, including Nigeria. Meanwhile, the underlying risk of a recession in the Eurozone Weak domestic demand and slowing growth in China have created tight financial conditions, which could easily worsen and reduce global growth prospects by the time monetary contraction begins in the US, Japan, and other advanced economies. The conclusion of German elections and the re-election of Angela Merkel for a third term as Chancellor should, however, open the door to much speedier progress in key reforms, especially around the common resolution mechanism for European banks. In the interim, the IMF has declared that global growth is strengthening on the back of accommodative monetary policy. The fund has further emphasized that though an end to unconventional monetary policy was certain, its impact would largely depend on country-specific circumstances and the pace of recovery recorded by various economies. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, has noted that the momentum in the global economy was shifting away from the emerging markets back to the advanced economies. The pace of business activity increased in the Eurozone, while an official index of leading economic indicators for the US also strengthened in August. Consequently, the OECD forecasts for advanced economies in 2013 have been revised upward to between 1.5 and 1.8%. The positive outlook in the advanced economies has compensated for the slowdown of growth in the major emerging markets. However, the OECD warned that a prolonged slowdown in major developing countries could have a profound effect on the world economy and translate into weaker growth for advanced economies. The IMF had projected global growth at 3.1% in 2013. Domestic Economic and Financial Developments Output the National Bureau of Statistics has reported a slowdown in the growth rate of gross GDP in Q1 and Q2 2013 relative to Q4 2012. Growth was estimated at 6.18% in Q2, down from 6.56% reported in Q1 2013. Overall, GDP growth for fiscal 2013 was projected at 6.91% up from 6.58% in 2012. The non-all sector remained the major driver of growth at 7.36% in Q2, lower than the 7.89% reported in Q1. In contrast to the all sector output decline of 1.15%, which was worse than the decline of 0.54% in Q1. The drivers of non-all sector growth remained agriculture, wholesale and retail trade and services. The committee expressed concern about the worsening performance of the oil sector, which is principally due to the reported incidents of growing crude oil theft and significant revenue leakages in the oil sector. The committee therefore urged the government to step up its efforts at curtailing the malfeasance in the oil sector and adopting best practice in establishing strong controls, independent oversight and transparency in the official oil sector. Prices. Inflationary pressures continue to moderate in response to the tight monetary stance, to the tight stance of monetary policy. Headline inflation declined from 8.7% in July to 8.2% in August. 
full inflation declined to 9.7% in August and in July. Healthcare inflation rose slightly to 7.2% in August from 6.6% in July. <coughs> the committee noted with satisfaction that overall headline inflation has remained below 10% for eight straight months and represented the lowest level achieved or, uh, over the past five years. The longest uh, and represents the, long, the longest stretch since 2008, and that the six-month inflation outlook indicates that inflation will remain within single-digit range. The committee was nonetheless conscious of the potential risks of the horizon, including the possibility of pressures coming from the fiscal activities of government in the later part of the year and the run-up to the 2014 elections. Monetary, credit, and financial market developments. Road money contracted by 5.58% in August 2013, over the level at end December 2012. When analyzed, M2 contracted by 8.37% compared with the growth of 3.51% in the corresponding period of 2012. M2 growth rate was also below the benchmark of 15.2% for 2013. This is to be expected given the tight monetary policy stance. Aggregate domestic credit grew by 3.85% in August, which analyzed a growth rate of 5.78% over the end December level, compared with a contraction of 3.56% in the corresponding period of 2012. The annualized growth rate in aggregate domestic credit at end August 2013 of 5.78% was below the provisional benchmark of 22.98% for 2013. Reserve money rose by 30.64% to 4,227.61 billion naira at end of August 2013 from 3,236.15 billion naira at end of June. At that level, reserve money was 343 billion or 8.83% above the third quarter 2013 dated benchmark of 3,884.55 billion naira. Interest rates in all segments of the money market moved in tandem with the tight level of liquidity in the banking system. The interbank call and OBB rates, which opened at 10.69 and 10.22% on July 29, 2013, closed at 15.67 and 14.92% respectively on September 20, 2013. The average interbank call and OBB, OBB rates for the period were 14.86 and 13.93% respectively. The recovery in the Nigerian capital market continued as equities market indicators all trended upwards during the period under review. The all share index increased by 28.9% from 28,078.81 on December 31, 2012 to 36,188.72 on September 20, 2013. <coughs> Market capitalization increased by 28.4% from 8.97 trillion naira to 11.53 trillion naira over the same period. Improved earn earnings and investor confidence in the economy contributed to the rise in stock prices. External sector developments. The naira exchange rate remains stable at the WDA segment of the foreign exchange market. The exchange rate at WDAS during the period opened and closed at 157.32 naira to the dollar, including the 1% commission. The average WDAS exchange rate during the period was 173.31 naira to 157.31 naira to the dollar. At the interbank segment, the naira exchange rate opened at 160.75 naira to the dollar and closed at 161.47 naira to the dollar, representing a depreciation of 72 color of zero or 0.45 percent. The average interbank exchange rate during the period was 160.78 naira to the dollar. At the BTC segment, the selling rate opened at 162.5 naira and closed at 163 naira to the dollar representing a depreciation of 50 cobalt or 0.31%. The average BDC exchange rate for the period was 162.14 naira to the dollar. The stability of the exchange rate reflected the commitment of the bank to supporting the currency at a time of massive depreciation in the currencies of emerging and frontier countries. This commitment was underscored 
by the policy of intervention to improve supply conditions and the very tight monetary conditions maintained since the last MPC meeting. The committee noted the decline in external reserves to $45.27 billion as of September 19, 2013. Reserves, however, still increased by $4.08 billion or 9.91% 9 .9 year on year compared with $41.19 billion at the end of September 2012. However, the committee observed that this level of accretion is too low given the relatively high price of crude oil and this further underscores the need for much needed reform in the oil sector. The committee's considerations. The committee noted the satisfaction, the positive developments in the economy, especially the moderation in inflation, stability in the financial system and currency markets. It also noted the strong growth forecast by the National Bureau of Statistics for growth in Q2. It observed that the actions taken by the bank since the last MPC yielded their intended effect of stabilizing the exchange rate while maintaining inflation within its target range. The committee also noted that the fundamentals of the economy which necessitated the July MPC measures had not changed substantially, except that the U.S. Federal Reserve had provided clearer insight into the tapering off of its asset purchase program, QE3. The committee noted that in more than 30 countries surveyed, the Naira exchange rate remained one of the most stable, having depreciated by only 2-3% to from year to date, compared with the massive depreciation in the value of other currencies such as the Indian rupee, the Indonesian rupiah, the Brazilian real, the South African rand, and the Ghanaian city. The clarifications provided by the Fed over its QE3 policy brought substantial relief to the financial markets globally and initiated a reversal of the trend in capital outflows from the country. However, the committee noted the existence of strong foreign exchange demand pressures coming domestically and which are not necessarily linked to an increase in the import of goods. This non-import related demand was attributed to the build-up in political activities in the country and increasing resort to dollarization of the economy by the political class. The committee charged the bank to ensure the stability of the currency in the face of these challenges and to fast track plans for adopting new regulations aimed at combating money laundering in the BDC segment. The committee considered the developments in money market rates, which rose astronomically to a peak of 40% on 18 September 2013. However, these developments were temporary, arising from the postponement and still, and still made a sharing of the monthly Federation Account Allocation Committee revenues. Banks which participated in the WDAS window expressed a preference for paying high, intra high interbank rates for one day, rather than borrowing from the CBN at 14% and being barred from the window. In any case, the committee noted the continued dependence of the banking sector on monetized oil revenues for its liquidity and stressed the need to keep pushing banks into altering their business model to reduce vulnerability. Decision. The committee noted that the actions taken at the last MPC have served the purpose of helping the Naira avoid the fate of other developing country currencies by keeping it relatively stable. It also noted the continued moderation in inflation and the benign outlook for the next six months. Finally, with the FOMC decision not to begin tapering asset purchases immediately and the improved outlook for financial stability in Europe after the German elections, the risks of currency instability are significantly reduced. The monetary stance maintained by the U.S. Federal Reserve is positive for international oil prices and portfolio flows. In consideration of all these issues, the committee decided by a vote of 11 members to 1 to hold the NPR at 12%. One member voted for a reduction in the NPR by 50 basis points. 11 members voted to retain this metric corridor of 200 basis points around the NPR, while one member voted for an asymmetric corridor of 200 basis points above NPR and 400 points below. All members voted to retain the 50% cash reserve requirement on public sector funds 
and 12% CRR on private sector deposits. Thank you. Questions, please identify yourself.